This is Drive with Darren Hinch. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. Good afternoon. Okay, what's wrong with the trains? We were talking on the program the other day about the abysmal state of the train system in Melbourne, specifically the Siemens trains, which kept being taken out of service with braking problems, and that means cancelled services and angry commuters. And despite being a layman with no engineering experience, I tried to sum it up by saying, you've got these hulking great trains weighing umpteen tonnes, packed with passengers, barreling down the track, and the one thing you should be able to rely on is that the brakes work and the trains can stop. Pretty basic. Well, the Siemens trains can't stop. Never could. And that's scary. Well, I've learned that this fault has been with the French imports since day one. Forget the other problems, like they were too wide for a rail network and a lot of money had to be spent on change in the city loop and at other stations to accommodate them. When the very first Siemens train was being commissioned, they discovered a braking problem. A firm called JPC Engineering had been contracted to test and refurbish the Comanche fleet of suburban trains. Remember them? To test the brakes, they would put about 60 tonnes of sandbags in three carriages to simulate a full load and then test the brakes. Well, that same team was then commissioned to test the Siemens trains. A sandbag test on the Pakenham line that usually took about two or three days. According to a senior engineer, who worked on that first Siemens train. It didn't take a week of tests, nor a month. It took 10 months. Loaded with tons of sand for passengers, it was impossible to stop. And when it did, it would only do it in dry weather. And he told me, even after a lot of work done on the braking system, the cold hard facts are that a fully laden Siemens train with a current seating and standing layout capacity will just stop in the dry. He said the public are playing Russian roulette, travelling on a full Siemens train. If there's a hint of moisture on the rail or in the air. And it gets worse. He also says, I do not joke in saying I've advised all my family and friends that if they are ever on a Siemens train that is anywhere near full and it starts raining, they had to get off it immediately at the next station. This is your public transport system a decade into the 21st century. It is a bloody scandal and dangerous. On the line, the former director of JPC Engineering and Project Management, Paul Cridge. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Darren. How are you? I'm well. You know a lot. You were back there in the days of the uh, the Comanche um, trains, and you, I explained how you put all the, all the sand in there to emulate... Uh, full trains to prove that they could stop yeah. and then you went and did the Siemens trains and, and as I explained they didn't they didn't work just didn't, didn't stop at all the, the, as, as you said in your introduction there uh, normally they take a couple of days to do the testing um, I won't mention the organisation that was um, doing the testing with us uh, the Melbourne organisation but uh, you know, it took 10 months to actually uh, get this first train to be able to stop. And it's impossible to stop in the rain. Well, is this why they're putting sand and dust and stuff on the tracks now to sort of emulate um, dry conditions? Look, I, I can't answer that, Darren, but uh, all I can say is, you know, the, the 10 months of uh, um, trying to get them to stop, uh, yeah, that's how long it took them, 10 months. Um, but, uh, and, and, and as you said in the introduction again, you know, uh, to say uh, these trains are uh, lemons would be insulting a lemon, to be honest with you, um, and uh, no one should actually be on one of these trains if it's raining. Now, all right, this, another problem, you can explain this better than I can, with the trains in Melbourne, they run units of cars, right? Is it two, three car units, is that right? That's correct. correct. Uh, we, 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 we run two, two types uh, in, uh, in Australia. We run units, which is uh, three, three carriages, and we also run a train set, which is six carriages. Okay. And were the, the Siemens trains, am I right in saying, were not designed to take three carriages? No, they weren't designed to take six carriages. <laughs> uh, when they when they were actually uh, purchased, um, the uh, the person who uh, made the placed the order forgot uh, that we actually uh, run six carriages. So when the Siemens trains arrived, you could not run six carriages together. They could not be connected. Well, they couldn't even connect them up. 
No, no. So what'd they do? Uh, again, I think it uh, costs a lot of money uh, um, to actually get them to, to be able to be connected up. Well, of course, they bought the Siemens trains are boasting that they're much cheaper than buying them here, but when you add in the, the, the adaptations they had to make, the adaptations they had to make because of the they were too wide, and then the extra money spent to adapt them for the, uh, the six-carriage uh, configuration, they probably spent more money than they would have if they bought trains here. The, 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 the difference in cost from a, uh, from a locally produced product uh, was completely eaten up during that period. Uh, and as you, as you mentioned, uh, one of the things that the public do not know is that uh, these trains were, again, whoever placed the order didn't know what they were doing because they were ordered too wide to go through the city loop and quite a number of the uh, stations on the metropolitan network had to be uh, had to basically be shaved, the platform, so, so the trains could get through. I, yeah, I, remember, I remember that part of it. I remember that part of it. Now, you say, and this is a very strong allegation to make, you say that you advise your family and friends if they're ever on a Siemens train that is nearly full and it starts to rain it to get off. Is that right? I, I I do not joke on that. I do not joke on that. Now, I've, I've been out of the industry for the past four years, so uh, there may have been the best changes and there may have been a lot of engineering work, but after what I heard last week about the trains again, it brought back uh, bad memories of uh, those ten months of trying to get the first Siemens train to stop. It's pretty basic, isn't it? I mean, you think that you get on a train, when it comes to a station or gets into trouble, it can stop, and safely. That's all you have to get from A to B, safely. I mean, you're, you're a former director of JPC Engineering. Correct. Yeah, so, I mean, we're not talking to some joker who just uh, mucked around the edges. You were, you were right in the middle of it in the early days. Oh, look, in, in the early days, I mean, we were, we were the preferred supplier to EDI Rail, who was the principal contractor That's right. to, to do all the refurbishment of the, the Connex trains. And, uh, and, National, and National Express before that. And, and that's like the best before their demise. So, uh, so, and we were also asked to to get involved in the commissioning of the uh, the Siemens trains when they first came in. And and, I, and I'll add on to that too, Darren. That uh, one thing, uh, and, and uh, this is a, a big comment to make too, that the Itachi trains. We were asked to decommission the Itachi trains in about 2002, 2003, and and put them to scrap. The reason why they, that uh, that order was stopped was because the Siemens trains. Um, were not, uh, were, were, just couldn't be used at the time, hence the Hitachi trains were kept in service. So the Hitachi ones were still virtually regarded as being um, um, a old hat and old fashioned and, 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 and unsafe back ten years ago, nine years ago? That, that's, that's, that's correct, they were, they were way past their time and we were asked to decommission them and, uh, and uh, put them to scrap. Yeah. All right, Mr. Critch, I know we'll talk again. I thank you very much for your time and thanks for alerting me to it. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Former Director of JPC Engineering and Project Management, that's Paul Critch. I'll take your calls on this, 9600-693. I mean, it's crazy. Just more and more, you think, how has this transport system been stuffed up for so many years? Now, are you concerned about the state of the transport system as a whole? I mean, it's all very well. The blame game goes on. You can't blame Connex anymore, that history. Now it's Metro, so you blame them. I mean, the Brumby government... They awarded the new contract with much fanfare, and yet they take no responsibility at all for the current mess. 9600-693. Peter, good afternoon. Yeah, good day, Darren. Look, thanks for giving us frustrated rail customers a voice. I travel on it every day because I'm a low wage earner. I can't afford the car. And I can't get over John Brumby's comments yesterday or the day before telling Metro to put their act together. He's just a hypocrite. It's the government's fault that they're in so much of a mess. And... Even with the extrapolis trains, I spoke to Dennis Waller the other day, between Box Hill and Laburnum, you're scared stiff you're going to come off the tracks. It's that rickety. Yeah. Well, of course, in the headlines, you would have heard at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon, the drivers have withdrawn their services from testing trains, and they have been taken out of service because of the, these very brake problems that, that we're talking about. Thanks, Peter. Tony, good afternoon. Yeah, good day, mate. Um, just quickly... Brumby is a hypocrite. He did say to get, they've got to get their act together, but Metro has leased everything off the government. The government, mate, couldn't couldn't get pissed in a brewery. And you know what's happened, mate? They've spent a billion dollars on my key when mm. they should have put it into the system first, mate. Like, they don't know what they're doing, and I think Brumby's one of the worst premiers we've had on spin. He's horrible, horrible. Well, the Mikey situation is just an endless schmozzle and it's got, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars just being eaten and eaten and people won't use it. They're scared of it and they think that it's not going to be reliable. Thanks, Tony. Take a break.